Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's a pleasure to be able to join you this uh, nice spring afternoon. And uh, on a somewhat different subject than we've uh, talked about in the last several weeks, uh, the subject we're going to be dealing with for the next hour is the subject of missile defense. It's a rather interesting uh, story. Uh, it involves uh, some history. Uh, it also involves uh, some, some very interested, uh, interesting sort of political wheeling dealing between various nations. And it um, is of particular interest to us because uh, it is a subject of defending our homeland and our lives. Now, the, uh, the story starts, at least as uh, my memory allows, going back some years, uh, back to a thing called the Anti-Ballistic Missile, the ABM Treaty of 1972. And that was an agreement uh, between uh, a number of different nations not to develop uh, a missile defense. Now, what does that mean exactly? What it means is, is that different nations were putting together two pieces of technology. The first was the ability to make missiles. Uh, that was started at my old alma mater, actually, by a guy by the name of von Goddard. And I uh, was an experimenter, and he was doing experiments like you might see uh, kids do to make model rockets and things. And, and so people started to realize that you could put a weapon on the end of a missile and uh, could shoot it at your enemy. Uh, that, that idea had been done with skyrockets before that with just black powder. Chinese did that to some degree, and they even used them on Fort McHenry. But this was a, a new development, and, and this was coupled with the idea of these nuclear warheads. Now, the nuclear warhead put a whole new different meaning on things because it was such a powerful weapon that if you could put a nuclear warhead onto a missile and then shoot that at your enemy, you didn't have to be too accurate even. And it would cause tremendous damage. And so it was, as I was just graduating from engineering school, what was going on was that we had negotiated a treaty with the Soviet Union called the ABM Treaty in 72, and what it said was that we are not going to defend ourselves from nuclear missiles. Now, that's kind of a crazy idea in a way because the job of a nation is to defend their own populace. Uh, the main job that we have in Congress, if you were to say, what's your main job? One of the main things need to be to defend America, to defend our homeland. And uh, yet this treaty said, we agree that we're not going to defend ourselves. In fact, the whole thing was called mad, and indeed it was mad, mutually assured destruction. You shoot a nu nuclear weapon at us, we'll shoot one back at you. Everybody melts down and everybody loses. So the theory is, is that that will create a stability. Well, it was uh, not so clear it was going to create stability because if one guy could shoot first and take the other guy down, uh, then, then it was not such a good thing not to be able to defend yourself. And so it was that we went through a number of decades from the, the uh, early 70s with this philosophy of mutually assured destruction. And um, it was really challenged in 1983 by Ronald Reagan. And Ronald Reagan started doing some thinking and say, hey, we, there's got to be a better way to do this thing than to have the Soviets and the Chinese aiming all these missiles at us and they could melt down our different cities. And so he came up with the idea of uh, what was called SDI, Strategic Defense Initiative. And so he uh, spoke at some length and uh, did a very good job selling the idea that America should be looking at defending ourselves from these weapons. And one of the things that most people didn't know and that he educated the American public on was the fact that a foreign nation could shoot a missile from one continent to the other. We could see it on the radar coming in We'd say, New York City, you got half an hour before you're turned into dust, into a nuclear cinder. And there wasn't a thing we could do about it. And so uh, Ronald Reagan said, there's got to be a better way to, to skin the cat than that. And so he came up with a strategic defense initiative. Uh, his detractors called it Star Wars, which actually didn't hurt from a marketing point of view any. And uh, so Ronald Reagan talked about the different technologies that could be deployed in order to try to stop one of these incoming missiles. Well, uh, that became kind of a hallmark of one of the things that Republicans stood for was missile defense. And it was one of the things that the Democrats decided they were against. They didn't like missile defense. Well, why was it they didn't like it? Well, they had two reasons. One, it wouldn't work. And two, 
It was too expensive. Well, and also they said it would destabilize relations between the countries as though they were so stable during the Cold War period. So um, that's what happened uh, in 83. Ronald Reagan made that proposal. It wasn't until actually uh, many years later when I got to Congress in 2002 that President Bush decided that it was time to move forward on this thing and protect our country. And so he proposed uh, and uh, actually initiated the changes to, uh, to give notice to the different uh, countries that were involved in the anti-ballistic missile treaty and said, you got your six months notice, we're going to start developing missile defense. Now, uh, that gives us a little bit of the background. But